Craig, it's nice having you here. Thank you. <laughs> you just listed your company three months ago. Yes. I think uh, as of today, you've got a two billion pound market cap. It's about 1.8, I think, but 1 .8. we'll get there. Okay, you're FTSE 250. Yes. You were, I think, the first uh, high street bank granted a license in 150 years. Yep. And yet seven years ago, it was you, four guys, and a blank piece of paper. Are you bringing sexy back to banking? I've never been called sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not sexy. No, I think we're just bringing service. Uh, it, it's all about focusing on customers. That's all it is. You know, it, it's called innovative in banking because people have forgotten what it's about. So, uh, but it's about technology, people, and place, and just focusing it all on the customer. How do you go after institutions like Barclays and RBS, which you used to work for as well, and Lloyd's, I mean, how do you go head to head against these retail banks that have been around for hundreds of years? I went into my own branch at NatWest recently, and I was treated like a customer for the first time in a long time. They're really putting a lot of focus back how can you really compete with that? I don't look to compete with them. Uh, first of all, I work out what customers want. Uh, looking at what the competition do doesn't tell you what the customers actually want. It tells you what they're getting delivered to them. So we worked out um, what customers want. We were copying the commerce model and bringing it to the UK. And uh, we went onto Google, looked at the top 10 reasons people didn't like their bank, and just engineered them out. Uh, and built the bank based on what customers wanted. So stores that are open seven days a week, technology that works, and um, real customer focus. We call it Create Fans. Last year we spent 60,000 pounds on advertising. 60,000. Yeah, I'm gonna be lower this year. And we doubled the size of the bank. So uh, many tech startups and startups in general, they have to allocate a large amount of the funds raised. You raised a billion. We've raised a billion pounds now, yeah. Um, and yet 60,000 on marketing. Yeah, I'm tight, I'm a northerner. Um, <laughs> It's uh, from Respect. Sutherland, sorry, uh, uh, in the northeast of England. No, we, the original raise we made was 15 million pounds. So we raised 15 million pounds and started to build a bank when there was four of us, um, which basically meant going to Tottenham Court Road, buying the cheapest laptops you could find. When it got to 12 of us, we, we got some desks and serviced offices, and we built from there. Um, 2,100 people today, uh, nearly 800,000 customers and growing, over 6 billion in deposits. Uh, and actually, the reason why we grow, the reason why we do it like that is we really value every pound. And my view is people don't trust advertising uh, from banks. Well, they don't trust advertising, they trust advertising from banks even less. So I'd much prefer to spend the money. I spent 30 million on technology last year, uh, 20 million on training, and 30 million on new stores. And to me, that's a long-term investment, whereas advertising is just throwing money into the wind. Talk to me about the experience when I walk into a Metro Bank. Is it true I can walk out with uh, a bank card with my chip and pin working in 15, 30 minutes? So within 30 minutes, 89% of customers uh, should walk out with, we call it walk out working. So it's, it's all really about fulfillment at point of sale. People want fulfillment when they choose to have it. So 89% of retail customers walk out with the mobile app set up, internet set up, telephony set up, their card printed, they choose their own pin number and they could go to the ATM straight away, plug it in, and it's all working, it's all real time. Uh, for business customers, it's around about 60% in 90 minutes. Or you could wait six weeks uh, for another organization, obviously, or you could wait 90 minutes with us. So you're gonna beat them at their own game? Um, we're gonna be amazing at what we do. Uh, my view is I don't get hung up on what the competition do. I don't look at the competition. I, I, I know I keep saying this, but I look at customers. And what our customers want is fulfillment at point of sale. It's all about, you know, it's like Amazon at, at, of open stores now. You know, the hardest issue for Amazon when you talk to them is that last yard of delivery. And to me, it's all about how can you make sure through whatever channel you're dealing with, you get fulfillment. Because customers want it now. Not, not in 24 hours, not in 48 hours, not in two weeks or six weeks. They want it now. And banking's about customers. We just forgot that. Right. We have forgot that, right? Yeah. We all know about the innovator's dilemma. Do you think, by definition, the big banks like Barclays and Lloyd's, they can't respond fast enough to a customer-oriented, retail-focused, it's really a store what you provide, yeah. isn't it? We call it a store because language is very important to us. Culture is the key. Uh, the, the, talking to other organizations, they keep looking for a silver bullet. Uh, there is no silver bullet to what we do. It's a million little things brought together, all of them focused on the customer. And that's very hard to copy because you can't copy a culture. 
You can only build a culture, reinforce a culture, embed a culture, but you can't copy it. And therefore, I love when people say, so what is it? Is it the magic money machines where you get coins counted for free? Is it that you print cards off? Is it that on the mobile app, you can freeze and unfreeze your card instantly? So if you've ever left it behind a bar, which I'm sure nobody in the audience has, you don't have to worry about it uh, or rush back to get it or cancel it, and that's a nightmare. So little app development, freeze, unfreeze, instant, real time. Is it any of them? It's all of them. It's everything put together. And it's also a smile. People want to deal with people who've got a bit of a zest and energy and want to be there. So it, it can't be copied. They can try and replicate it, but it can't be copied. Uh, and their legacy will hold them back. I thought Barclays were doing a very good job, to be fair. Or, or their, I think their app's a really good piece of work. But it, it's how fast can they move forward? How agile are they? How many mistakes are they willing to make? And, and, and how quickly will they learn from them and move on? That, to me, is where we have an an opportunity to keep moving forward, keep developing, keep improving. We've got to be better tomorrow than we were today. And to me, it's that continuous Kaizen-like improvement so that we can't be caught. Tony Shea of Zappos says that a company brand is a lagging indicator of the company culture. Have you thought about that, that correlation when you really focus on your culture? Well, yes, because to me, the brand is the public face of the culture. And if you've got a disconnect between the brand and the culture, customers know. Because if you're selling one vision and then delivering another, customers know. And that's why I don't like advertising. You know, when somebody tells me that I should like them, I instantly normally just put a question mark. You know, we're the helpful bank. Really? Question mark? Um, to me, it's much better to deliver it and build the brand off delivery. So like I said, we spent 60,000 pounds on advertising last year, but our net promoter score constantly runs between 75 and 80%. And we win more customers through recommendation from friends, family, and colleagues than anything else. We do not offer incentives. I, I don't want customers who want to come to me for a special offer. I want customers who want to come to me for service and convenience. Because when they join me for service and convenience, and then I deliver service and convenience, they stay for the long term. And that's how you build a long-term growth model, in my view, is win customers for what you offer, deliver it, and then get more from them. Talk to me about that last yard. I, I'm sure most of the founders here have companies that don't get to see their customers on a daily basis. It's virtual, it's online, it's through apps. What can they learn from you about that point of contact where you actually look your customer in the eye and deliver again, wow, as Tony Shea would say? <laughs> I think it's all about communication and the two-way communication. So I would say meet them, whatever way that is, virtual or otherwise. Um, you can pay for as much research as you want, but if it's your product, if it's your service, if it's your company, make sure you know your customers and you talk to them. Because there's nothing like knowing it yourself and having that granular touch and feel, especially when you can't afford the research, um, uh, especially in the early days, that, that I think makes a huge difference. And then back yourself. Back yourself, because if you're going to make it a real success, you're going to know better than what anybody else is going to tell you. Is it true you have dog biscuits in your stores? Yes. And, of course. And these are for the customers. Dogs. <laughs> for the customers' dogs. And, um, and you open, I heard you open 10 minutes early and 10 minutes late. So our stores are open seven days a week, 362 days a week. A bank. Okay. And, and the point is that our customers need banking seven days a week. You know, when you walk down the high street, the stores, the shops, the retailers are open on a Sunday. And they need to get cash in and out. Um, so, yeah, we open seven days a week. We actually do so much business on a Sunday. Uh, we, we, we deal with more SME customers on a Sunday than we do Monday to Friday. Uh, and that shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, because if you're a painter, decorator, builder, electrician, whatever, you kind of need to be on site earning your money Monday to Friday. And we forget that. So, for us, yeah, we open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., uh, Monday to Friday, 8 or 6 on a Saturday. It used to be 11 to 4 on a Sunday, but we had to extend the hours because we were just too busy. Uh, couldn't uh, close at four, so we now close at five. And we have what we call the 10-minute rule. We don't advertise it, but we have the 10-minute rule, which means we open 10 minutes before and we close 10 minutes later. Because when a customer comes to the door, and it's kind of two minutes past eight on a night, and you open the door and say, come on in, of course we'll serve you, it blows customers away. You know, or you could go to another bank in two minutes past five. They're standing there going, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, but they're still there. Why can't they serve you? If it's about the customer, 
they'd open the doors. So we, pay our, we pay our people to be there longer than we have the opening hours, just to create the right engagement with customers. You were just ranked the UK's top CEO when it came to an anonymous uh, rating from inside your company, your employees. Now, you're a nice guy, <laughs> but oh, how, yeah. <laughs> how do you grow a business wife, but... you know, from zero to two billion pounds? Um, it's aggressive, it's gotta be difficult, and keep everyone in your organization happy. I, I literally, I wanna know. <laughs> I don't think we do keep everyone happy. I think that what we do is we have a very, very strong value set. And in May seven years ago, four of us sat in a pub with two bottles, well, two bottles of red wine, and we wrote the values of the organization on two beer mats. Uh, I have them framed now, hanging up at home. And we've been very true to those values. And we live by the values, we use them in everything we do. And on the first day anybody joins the company, they get the joy of sitting down with me and talking about the values and why it's important that they buy into the values. Or they, um, I call it FIFO. You either, or you, um, so um, you, you fit in or you... Uh, uh, FIFO. Yeah, you FIFO. And it's really important that you're very clear about the values. I think as a small organization as we were growing, we couldn't afford to carry people who didn't buy into the values of the organization and what we were about. And I still think that's true today. Everybody knows the values. Everybody needs to live the values. And therefore, when you're making hard decisions, as long as you bring it back to the values, you focus it on the values, and you communicate it against the values, people might not agree with the decision, but they can respect why you've made it. And actually, the award was for uh, respect. I, you know, I, I don't think I'm that liked. You know, I'm, I'm obviously hunting down the 1% that voted against me. But um, it's... Um, I joke, but it's all about clarity of values and clarity of decision making against those values. <clears throat> We've seen some aggressive fintech startups go after the banks. I'm thinking TransferWise right now, and they've made ads that literally thumb their noses at the I banks. I loved it. And I love them, and they're great. Yeah. Have you considered that type of aggressive strategy? Yeah. And if not, why? Grilla Marketing, I love. Um, and, and I know Tavent and Christo, uh, good guys. Yeah. Uh, I've been into their offices and had a coffee with them. And, and likewise, because you can learn from each other. You know, uh, the, the, I love talking to people who've done good things, and I love learning from them. Uh, and so uh, uh, Christo was kind enough to talk me through how they built their company, what they've done, uh, uh, and we share some ideas. So to me, I, I love their um, Grilla uh, tactics. I'm not sure me walking down in my pants holding uh, a sign would work in quite the same way. Uh, as it did for them, I think I'd have people running away rather than coming towards Never me. Never know. Uh, no, I know, <laughs> trust me. Um, and uh, So yes, we do do some Grilla marketing, uh, but we don't do it in quite the same way because I think uh, we just have a different value set, a different culture, and therefore we play to our culture. The, the dog biscuits is part of it. What the, the dog biscuits is about, and, and dogs coming into the store, is because what we're saying is why would we want you not to bring your dog in? We want you to come into the store, we want you to feel welcome, we want you to feel engaged. And you probably love your dog. <laughs> you know, most people love their dogs. You don't want to tie it up outside and be worried about it. I don't want you to tie it up outside and be worried about it, so bring it in. We have had horses, um, <laughs> we've had ferrets, we've had rabbits. Uh, the horse was kind enough to leave a deposit. Um, <laughs> And each store has a pooper scooper, we call it, to, to scoop up the uh, poop. And unfortunately, the horse kind of beat that. Uh, but it doesn't matter, because it's about making sure customers feel welcome. Right. And it's about engaging them and getting them to come in and, and see us and meet us. What's next for you? Global domination, expanding to Europe, China. Tell the Yanks what time it is. I'm not doing that. Um, it's interesting about, you, you say you tell the Yanks that. Over 90% of the investment we raised, from 15 million in the first round to now being over a billion in equity, 90% uh, has come from America, where I think they do value growth more than in the UK. It's been very surprising to me. Um, in America, when I, I did work for RBS, they say, wow, you work for RBS, what did you learn? Whereas here, I get, wow, you work for RBS, God, what did you screw up? <laughs> so it's kind of a very different. Um, what next for us? Well, I'm a lad from Sunderland, like I said. Uh, I've promised my dad we'll get a store there at some point. Um, it's about continued improvement, though. It's continued growth. We are investing a significant amount of money in our new digital offerings at the front end. We're going to be rolling that out over the next nine months. But for me personally, it's about making sure we build the culture. I go back to the one thing you can't copy is culture. 
and the thing that will, will ensure success of Metrobank is making sure that we have a culture absolutely fanatically focused on the customer. Do you think and that's people my job. ignore that culture play? Do you think it gets lip service with a lot of startups? Yes. And I think that uh, they'll be the ones that won't be there forever or for the long term. And does that all come down to leadership and who's at the top? Yeah. I, I don't think so it's who's at the top. I think it comes down to leadership through the organization. And I think it's, it's being clear about expectations against the culture and then being true to it. And, you know, I've made mistakes, <laughs> more than one or two. And it's interesting how I have people who will call me out and say, you said that, that doesn't fit with the values. And you kind of go, crikey, it doesn't. So having people able to challenge you and get you back on the right course is really important as well. Greg, thank you so much. Appreciate My pleasure. Your time. Thank you very there much. There he is. <clears throat> thank you.